everybody, it's me again, and welcome back to another episode of Black Flag Shenanigans. We're here in present day, as we have been for the last episode or two, maybe. Um, hacking stuff, learning stuff, conjuring theories about stuff. <laughs> and, um, we're trying to get all the laptops and all the sticky notes and stuff like that. I have, like, I have ten laptops left to find, and I only have three sticky notes, and I know where one of them is. So, we're gonna hack this computer. And then we're gonna head some- ah, damn it. We're gonna head up somewhere else and find some more laptops. And more sticky notes. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> Did it! Yay! We found a voice- uh, a tape recording of Subject 1 talking about um, how it was in the Animus controlling Aveline, which was very interesting. We are attempting to synchronize the DDS system. This will only take a moment. We are Prague. almost there. Elizabeth Jane Westy. The Westing. DDS is now in sync. Thank you for your patience. We hope you enjoy your experience. Rudolf II invited many notable figures to his court, making Prague the center of European culture. Among them were Englishman Edward Kelly and his stepdaughter, Elizabeth Jane Weston. Observe her and report any alleged collusion. Wow! I feel like I've heard that name before. Elizabeth Jane Weston. Any collusion? I wasn't paying attention. Weird. Divine science video. Alright, now I believe the sticky note was either in here or in the other one. And I missed it. There you are! Okay. Let's get this one. <gasps> it's the last one. We submit ourselves to eternal servitude in service of a grander fulfillment. We submit the word to itself, it being a product that feeds life to life and death to death. May she, mother, sister, wife, lover, friend, bring light to darkened minds and humility to those who suck her for, for its wisdom. With that, that wisdom. Guide us into the gray, beloved. Guide us. Oh, that's so creepy. I am very very excited to see what's gonna happen with Juno and the first civilization and everything next time. Like, in the next game. That is going to be very interesting, but we're gonna just in the purpose of... Is it up there? Very... Alright, see ya, Sean! I really wish I could talk to him. You can't talk to anybody out here, though. Which kinda sucks. All right, we're gonna go to sample 17. Okay, I believe I've been here. Oh, there's a sticky note. I've been in here once, I think, but I doubt I've gotten everything. Sticky note 12. Today's Abstergo Templar frauds have given themselves to base practices and claim wrongly that man and woman are delicate and sensible and feeling creatures in and of themselves and therefore deserve satiety and comfort and mindlessness in the presence of pleasure. Nothing could be sicker, falser, disgusting, lying bastards. Someone's angry. I'm only missing one more sticky note, and it could be anywhere. God damn it. All right, back here somewhere. Ish. There we go, there's one. I still have one more subject zero thing left to find. I believe it's number three. Improvising. I'm always just improvising. I just go wherever I feel like is right, and I get it within like 10 seconds. Am I just a genius, or lucky, or... Is it really just this easy? <laughs> Either way, let's uh, see what this has to say. Alright, hi, Pope Alexander the Sixth, I think? Roderick, what? Okay, that's weird. Who's that? Pope Alexander the Sixth, a cleric and born vivant by any name, Rodrigo Borgia served as Templar Grand Master from 1476 until his death. For too long, this man of faith and passion suffered under a smear campaign at the hands of his enemy, Ezio Auditore. Let him now be celebrated and remember, remembered for his progressive outlook and focus on family values. FAMILY VALUES! 
Family values! I suppose Cesare is more of an of a counterexample of that than Rodrigo is, but he tried to poison Cesare with those apples at the end of Brotherhood. Family values! Really? And I'm pretty sure... Did he know that uh, Cesare and Lucrezia were having like a Cersei Jamie Lannister relationship? <laughs> did they know that? Uh, twin cest? I don't know if uh, Cesare and Lucrezia were twins, but... Jamie and Cersei definitely were. Okay. Uh, is there anything else back here? Yes! One more Animus. Almost there. Really almost there. Dag... No. There we go! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, let's see which one this is. I always get nervous when I hack hey, one Dad. of these. Ah, uh, you know, oh. it's, uh... It's funny, I, I have this memory of you. Uh, one I keep coming back to. And uh, I, I always think about it when I'm working or just before going to bed. Uh, because it um, sort of calms me, I guess. Um, I was 14, I think. And, uh, and, and you were trying to teach me how to, to walk with a light step. Remember that? How to be mindful of how much noise I made when I moved around. Simple stuff. Stuff I understand now, but back then, I, uh... Gotta tell you, I thought you were just being <laughs> an asshole. Uh, so, uh, you told me you were gonna go up to your room and sit with your back to the door and read a book. And you wanted me to wait at least 15 minutes and then sneak up there and tap you on the shoulder without you knowing. I, I even remember the book you were reading at the time, the one by uh, Captain Johnson. And you warned me that if you caught me, we'd have to start all over. Then you went upstairs. And I waited. I waited, and I waited, and I waited. I waited four hours before deciding to go up. And even then, it took me 20 minutes to get to the foot of the stairs. And uh, another 30 to get up them. And then 10 to get down the hall. And there I was at the door, and peeked into your room and I was I was so hoping that you'd be asleep but no no you you were still reading and I just about shit myself <laughs> but ten minutes later I was just five feet away from you and that's when I remember setting my foot down and you flinched ever so slightly you I thought maybe I'd imagined it, but I knew you'd hurt me. You didn't say anything. You just checked your watch, you reached for your drink, you took a sip, and then you kept reading. But I knew I'd failed. You didn't say anything. I, I, I didn't understand why. Then I lunged and tapped you on the shoulder. And you turned around and, oh, fantastic, you said. And you scooped me up and you gave me a big hug. And I didn't say anything. But Dad, Dad, I was so pissed off. I wanted to <laughs> scream at you. I, I failed. And you knew it. But you said nothing. And I stayed mad for weeks. I thought you were, you, you were patronizing me. But maybe you decided right there that I was never going to be the man you wanted me to be. But I realized just a few years ago that you checking your watch, that was the clue, wasn't it? You let me win because I had been so patient. I guess that impressed you. You know, maybe at that moment you thought it might be better to be my dad instead of my mentor. I, I don't really know. Maybe for you, they're, they're one and the same. You know, either way, I'm happy to know that both my mentor and my dad are looking out for me that day. I didn't understand that then. I think I do now.
Oh. I hate listening to these. They make me so emotional just because I know he's dead now. Hmm. I'm depressed. Again. Oh. I love listening to those, but I hate it at the same time. Just because the whole time he's talking and telling me these stories, I know that he's dead now. And that at some point in his life, like, I think in AC3, he took the time to make those. And we weren't made aware of it until now. That hits me. I don't know why, but it does. There's the last sticky note. We'll go ahead and get that. Okay. I'm okay. What is that? The instruments of the first will. Okay. It's just a picture. Weird. Oh, wait. So there's one more? I'm still missing number three if I'm... Oh, no. Here we go. Being that it is well understood that tools, homes, cars, cutlery, pencils, tables, books, chairs, domesticated animals, light bulbs, mobile phones, sex, toys, vacations, homes, sofas, lounge chairs, swimming pools... <gasps> <sighs> are indirect byproducts of our genotypic expressions, otherwise known as extended phenotypes, we submit. <sighs> Good lord. Hey, what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh, I found it. Interesting. Okay. I love this! Okay, <laughs> that was a bit of an overreaction, I'm sorry. Let's get these laptops while we're here. I haven't even been in this back room. I can't believe I've avoided it, not noticed it, for so long. Alright, let's do this shit again. Let's see if we can get it on the first try this time. Hoja! Haya! Haya! Yes! I'm a genius! It was more like luck, because my control stick didn't fuck me over again. Oh, the clouds are starting to settle in again. Okay, uh, hope this is on. It's the first one. I don't think I've ever used this phone more than a few times to record anything. <clears throat> uh, hey, Dad. So, uh, we're all here in New York at the motel. Oh, okay. It's, uh, Queens, actually. In Astoria, near the NQ. Uh, Rebecca's off getting batteries for something. Sean's in his room doing whatever Sean does. And, uh, you're out getting some food. Me? Well, I'm supposed to be getting ready to break into some offices in the financial district. It feels just like prepping for one of your old training drills, actually. Ten years go by, and then you show up, and it's like, uh, like I, I was never gone. And we're right back to the ball busting and the conspiracies and paranoia Only this time I believe you I believe every word you know I don't even think you know the half it's raining I, I don't think you know how much I've seen how much I've, I've learned in just a few weeks everything really I feel like uh, like I've, I've lived a thousand years or, or, or ten thousand maybe it's impossible to explain but when you see that much of the world through the eyes of so many, you can't help but be sad. And to see all these incredible, intelligent people fight the same battles, make the same mistakes over and over again. Because culture and knowledge and, and history, these things, they aren't passed on through our genes. Every kid on Earth needs to relearn the basics, how to live how to survive, how to stand up for, for what's right. So much is lost in the transfer. So much is added to every generation. It's a shame. I mean, over and over, everything must be learned again. Ooh. I met Clay, Dad. Clay Gesmeric, in the Animus. I knew him by his Abstergo handle, 
Subject 16. My, uh, my predecessor. And he showed me things. He passed them to me. Just before he died. Or got deleted or whatever. Everything he'd learned, everything he'd seen. Uh, God, how do I talk about this? So, um, I guess you, you trained him. I left. He really looked up to you, and now that I've seen through his eyes, I, I think I understand why. I'm glad you had him around, even if I wasn't there. The things he showed me. Unbelievable things. And I never... Shit. All right, I'll back in a second. I didn't know William trained Clay. I didn't know that. So he still had kind of like a son figure. Maybe that's why Subject 16 was so willing to help me, Desmond. Because he knew Desmond's father. Maybe. I brainstorming again. But that's still very interesting. How many do I have? I have Oh god. 1 2 3 4 I'm missing one more? I think- is there five? Or is there only four? Oh no, no, there, there only must be four, because this is the last one. Well, that's all of them, then. That's all Desmond left for us. <sighs> the feels. Why is this not red? Why is this screen not red? Oh well. Let's go to this one. Maybe they'll both turn red once I've finished with both of these. I still have to find that other Subject Zero recording, which is going to be like another 15 minutes. I can do it. 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 I did it. Second time. Second try. Second time's a charm. Yay! The sun's going down, so that's why my webcam isn't as fluid as it was in my earlier recordings today. What is that? Subject 17, Recovered Media. No, he took these photos! That's what that is! Sean driving in the car? A selfie! <laughs> Why would you take a selfie? Brazil, that's when he was in Brazil. Fee on the beach. Rebecca, smiling. She probably blinked at the last second because Rebecca. Hi, Dad. In the back of the car. Oh, man. I'm not crying. <laughs> Be quiet. When did he see a kitten? Like, where? When would they have the opportunity to see that? Unless it was a stray, poor thing. That's right outside the sanctuary from AC3. Oh, wow. They all looked so happy and hopeful. I never thought I would miss Desmond as much as I do. I remember before AC3 came out, and like even before Revelations came out, I would talk to people, fellow Assassin's Creed fans, and they would say how much they hated Desmond, how boring he was, how annoying he was, how dull he was, how stupid he was. And I was just like, Ugh. and now that he's gone, everyone's saying how much they miss him and how they want him to come back. It's like, people cannot make up their minds. Alea ghost lights. Where is that? It is the opinion of this researcher that inadequate attention has been paid to Southeast Asia, and in particular the Himalayas, our research into first civilization peoples and the subtle fingerprints they have left throughout the, throughout, throughout the world, typo, would benefit greatly from further investigation into this region. For example, we may find a prime example in the form of the El Elia... Okay, how do you spell it? Does the Y come first or the E? I'm pretty... I, th I think it's A-L-E-Y-A, I think. But, typo again. Ghost lights. 
Often reported by fishermen, the lights appear over marshes and possess the power to distract, waylay, and even compel victims to drowning, but have also proven useful as navigational aids. Gas seems like too facile. Facile. That's Spanish for easy, isn't it? An explanation. So it seems- gas seems like too easy an explanation, or too simple an explanation. Has genetic memory research yielded evidence of anything similar yet? Well, they are small orbs. And they compel people to do things. Could they be apples of Eden? Or some variation of the kind? Maybe. There's no specific count of how many actually exist, so it could be. Ghosts or gas or something else. In the Himalayas, these are said to be the souls of deceased fishermen. We really don't take fishermen seriously enough, do we? How many times has a simple fisherman village yielded significant information, if not treasure? What is that? It's off the coast of Florida. Oh, oh, Bermuda Triangle. Oh, okay. What must surely be the most intently studied region whose very existence is routinely denied by official sources, the Devil's Triangle has been held responsible for countless vanished vessels, aircraft and ship alike, since the earliest days of sail. The region's tech... Technomnivorous, good lord, tendencies have been attributed to many magnetic poles. Pole of the lost continent of Atlantis. Atlantis? I can't talk. To UFOs and even to unnamed mysterious forces. While the area still holds much interest and we firmly believe in the power of science over superstition, we have been unlucky in researching this area and can claim only to have contributed to two small aircrafts, a ship, and several hundred thousand dollars of research equipment to the hungry maw of its continued mystery. For the time being, it may be safer to pursue greater knowledge of the region through genetic memory research via the Animus program. So this is more of that crypto history stuff that uh, was before. This is like a part two. Okay, is that... Tenochtitlan? Eh... Or is that the place that, um, that Aveline was? What was the name of Aveline's place? Chichen Itza. There we go. Yes, this is the place Aveline was. I need to continue my Let's Play of that. <laughs> I did lose a couple parts, but I'll replay them for you guys. One of the most popular tourist attractions in Mexico today, Chichen Itza was one of the largest cities of the pre-Columbian Maya Mayan civilization. I've been talking for the last few hours. I'm not used to commentating this long anymore. So I'm like... Anyway. Boasting a mix of architectural styles from across the empire, it is also known to include contributions from members of the first civilization believed to have fought on the front lines against the human rebellion. In particular, the te technologically advanced system of the caves, tunnels, and puzzles that run underground between the Castillo Temple, Castillo Temple, Castillo Temple, and the Sino Sagrado are rich with first civilization artifacts. Excavated in the 18th century in the, a controversial dig ordered by Madeleine, Madeleine de Lisle. Yeah. Volum, voluminous in quantity, so there's apparently a shit ton of them. They're, they are minor but culturally significant artifacts which, as a collection, provide us with the best picture we have of life on Earth in the months preceding the Toba catastrophe. The site is currently under federal protection, but we are close to reaching an agreement with the Mexican government. Okay, Easter Island. That one's a given. Located at the southeastern point of the Polynesian Triangle, Big Rapa is home to some 887 Moai statues created by the Rapa Nui people. One of the most isolated inhabited islands, a territory of Chile protected as a yeah, world heritage site, <laughs> it has proven difficult to study closely in this century. Some records are available from the 18th century, when the Rapa Nui suffered from disease communicated by European sailors. 19th and 20th century records indicate slave raids, famine, war, and deforestation. Despite this rich and perhaps tragic history, it is the Moai statues that are most heavily protected. Carved from the stone of an extinct volcano, it is not known how they were transported for installation. This mystery fascinates tourists, but if we could gain access to conduct a private archaeological excavation of the island, it's the petroglyphs and network of caves established by even earlier civilizations that we believe would yield the most productive results. Interesting. Antarctica? You're saying there's something below Antarctica? That's creepy. 
Lake Vos- I am way off. I am way off! <laughs> Russia! Working with our Russian partners, we have secured an agreement to commence research into the subterranean lake that rests deep beneath Vostok Station, in the accurately, if poetically named, Pole of Cold on the East Antarctic Ice Sheet. It is Antarctica! I'm not stupid! I was right! Right? Sitting approximately 3,500 meters above sea level, this freshwater lake rests 4,000 meters beneath the surface. A core ice sample was extracted in 2012, and we will soon begin research that should provide a paleoclimatic record going back some 400,000 years. Good lord! Isolated fossil water reserved samples may prove even older. Only time and science will tell what genetic marvels these magnificent samples will reveal, if not a new window into first civilization life itself. So that is Antarctica. It's just, it's called Lake Vostok because the Russians discovered it. I think. Right? I wasn't stupid. Or was I stupid? I don't know. Am I stupid? <laughs> anyway, that is still very interesting. Why aren't any of these laptops turning red? That's weird. Crazy son of a bitch! What are you doing? There's my camera! Something's gonna happen before I reach it! Pick it up! Pick it up! Pick it up! How do I get to it? Parkour over it? No? Camera. Thank fucking Christ. Does it still work? Oh, uh, ah! Oh! Uh, 